Hey, what's going on? Luke here, and we're here to do my tips and predictions for round nine of the 2022 NRL season. Now, round eight saw some major upsets, in particular, my Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs upsetting the Sydney Roosters. We go into this week, though, with a little bit more confidence, but that doesn't mean the tips and predictions are any easier. Now, we're not going to waste any more time. We're going to get straight into these tips and predictions. Starting off with the first game of the round, it sees the South Sydney Rabbitohs taking on the Brisbane Broncos. The Broncos actually in some pretty decent form, beating the Bulldogs and then beating the Sharks at home. This time, they are away from home, though, so that does... I feel like it does tip things in favor of South Sydney. South Sydney have been all right. Uh, at times through this season, they've looked pretty decent. At times, they've looked absolutely awful. But I feel like going into this game, because it is a home game for South Sydney, I'm more inclined to say that the Rabbitohs are going to win this one. I know the Broncos have been pretty good, but... I've been there in person. That Suncorp crowd really, really gets you going. And I feel like it gets the Broncos players going. When you take that crowd away, I feel like you take a large part of the Broncos away. So for me, I feel like I'm going to be tipping the Rabbitohs. It's not anything purely on like, oh, Rabbitohs got the better players or Broncos got the better players or anything like that. It's just because I feel like you take away the crowd from the Broncos, I feel like they lose a lot. So I think the Rabbitohs have shown enough this year that they haven't been winning every week, but they have shown enough for me that they can beat the Broncos. Now, if the Broncos come out and win, I won't be actually surprised at all. Like, this is a game that the Broncos can definitely win. But for me, I'm just going with the Rabbitohs. I'm going to go 1-12. I think it will be a close one. But I feel like Damian Cook will be able to get them home. It's the Canberra Raiders taking on Mike Henry Bankstown Bulldogs. Now, the Raiders lost yet again in a game that they shouldn't have lost. They really shouldn't have lost that one. Jack Whiten's out for them this week. Huge loss for them. Um, easily their best player. Whenever he gets the ball, he is a threat. So him being out definitely is going to hurt them. Now, they got a house combo of Matt Frawley and Snyder, and I really hate that house pairing. I'll see Matt Frawley at the Bulldogs. Snyder's been okay, but them as a house combo, it leaves a lot left to be desired. So, uh, I really don't like that. Jared Croker back in for his 300th game, though, so I do like that. Unfortunately for Raiders fans, I'm going to be tipping the Bulldogs here. Even as a Bulldog supporter, I feel like this is the smart money. Go with the Bulldogs. They competed hard for the last couple of weeks. Unlucky against the Broncos. They've been unlucky a lot of times throughout the season. They've been very, very close, apart from really the Melbourne game. But uh, in terms of this side, I feel they should be able to get the chocolates against the Raiders. I mean, the side has been competing hard, like I said. You take on a team like the Raiders, who have been crumbling under any sort of pressure, and I feel like the Dogs should be able to win this one. I think this is probably the first game that I can go into the game, apart from maybe like the Cowboys around one, and I can be like, yeah, we're, we're probably going to win this one. So I'm hoping that's the case. I'm hoping the Bulldogs win. I do think it is going to be a 13 plus. I think the Bulldogs are finally going to get their stuff together and, and finally sort out their, their attack. And, and the defense is all right usually, but we just need to sort out our attack. Last couple of weeks has always been like COVID sort of things, but Josh Jackson returns. Brent Naden also returns. So this is the first week in a couple of weeks where we've sort of been full strength. So uh, we're taking on a team in the Raiders who definitely aren't full strength. So yeah, like I said, Bulldogs 13 plus. Now moving on to possibly game of the round. It's the Penrith Panthers who are in first spot taking on the Parramatta Eels who aren't in the top four. They're actually in fifth spot. Now a couple of weeks ago I would have said this is, would have been a really really tough decision to, to pick this one but as of late the Parramatta Eels have shown as soon as Jacob Arthur came into that side they moved Dylan Brown into the centers. They have lost a lot. I know there's been a lot of talk about Jacob Arthur. Not really going to talk about it too much but he definitely is not Dylan Brown. Let's put it that way. Uh, the Panthers though haven't really been playing that well but even when they're not playing that well, they're still going to towel up a lot of sides. Eels, probably not one of them, though. The Eels seem to trouble the Panthers for some reason. Uh, there's just a few sides, like the Eels seem to trouble Melbourne as well. Something about the Eels up against these top sides. I don't know if it's a case of the Eels just step up against these sides and can't do it against the, the worst sides, but uh, for some reason, these are always competitive games, and Eels have been one of the few teams who have actually been able to beat Penrith in the regular season, so be interesting to see if the Eels can do it this week. I don't think so. I think Penrith should win this one, but at the same time, the Eels can make it competitive. Even though like they, they got beat by the Cowboys, they got beaten well. Um, but I still think them up against Penrith, something about that matchup just just troubles Penrith a little bit. But I am going to be going Penrith. I am going to go one to twelve. I think it will be tight. Uh, but at the same time, I can also see the game being blown out at some point. But I'm going to go Penrith one to twelve. I will just point out that this week Jacob Arthur actually isn't playing in the halves, and Dylan Brown is back into the half. So that should be a big conclusion for Parramatta as well. But it doesn't really change my decision. Penrith to win. Next. Next up, sees the Manly Ringer Seagulls with Tommy Turbo taking on the West Tigers. This should be an absolutely fantastic game. The Tigers, as of late, have increased their form, but last week I thought they were pretty poor. I know a lot of people are going to talk about how it was a close game and Dragons just got the job done in the end and all that sort of stuff. But for me watching the game, I thought it was pretty poor. Um, I thought the halves didn't really do a hell of a lot. I know there's a lot of talk about Jackson Hastings, but 
last week, him and Brooks, I feel like, were definitely a step down from the last couple of weeks. And even when the Tigers were winning, they were winning in very tight contests. So, come up against Manly with Tommy Turbo back. A very different back line for the Manly side as well, but Tommy Turbo's back. Hopefully Manly's back. It's been weird seeing them without Tom Turbo after last year, especially like the season that he had and then coming out this year. And even when he was playing, he wasn't really doing too much. So I don't know if he was already injured or not, but yeah, Tommy is back. And I feel like just his presence alone should be enough to get the job done against the Tigers. I still don't really rate the Tigers as a side too much, but the last couple of weeks, it was nice to see them get some wins, but I didn't think they'd be able to keep it going. I thought they'd be able to keep it going last week against the Dragons and it didn't happen. Um, and if it's not happening against the Dragons, I can't see it happening against Manly, but you never know. They did beat some pretty decent sides. They beat Parramatta. Um, they beat the Roosters. So, I mean, anything's possible, I guess. But at the same time, Tommy Turbo's back. is still there. I think Manly going to win this one. I'm going to say 13 plus. Now moving on to the next game, which is the Sydney Roosters taking on the Gold Coast Titans. Both of these teams I watched with great attention last week. The Roosters, because they'll take it on my Bulldogs. Referees tried to get them home. Couldn't get the job done. Unlucky Roosters. Titans, I was actually at the game. I thought they fought really hard against a, a pretty decent Penrith Panthers side. Panthers were definitely off last week, but at the same time, it's a Penrith Panthers. Even when they're off, they're still going to be a, you know, a top 2-3 side. They're still a fantastic side. And the Titans actually had the lead at half time so I was liking what I was seeing from the Titans and I really couldn't believe the scoreline I was like damn this is this is close and I don't really understand why it is close but it is close same can sort of be said about the Roosters like with their scoreline you look at their side and what's been happening the last couple of weeks I look at the scores and I say I, I don't really understand it they should be doing a lot better last week Joey Manu only had like five or six runs um, he was pretty poor last week after being so good for so long. Last week was was definitely interesting. I know Aaron Schott was all over him, but it was interesting. And it was the Jane Tedesco show. If he didn't do it, the Roosters didn't do anything. So uh, look, Tedesco looks to be back with some, some pretty good form, but the rest of the side... Major question marks, but in terms of them up against the Titans at home, I still think they're going to win. Um, the Titans themselves, that they they, be they beat themselves a lot of the times. David Fafita is out as well. Um, so I just can't see a reason why the Titans actually win this one. However, we saw last week that Titans can strike, and if they defend half decent and they keep it close, I think they can actually win this one, but... I'm going to tip the Roosters just because I feel like they need to bounce back eventually, right? In terms of a score, I feel like it will be close because the Roosters games this year always seem to be close. So I'm going to go Roosters 1-12. to Next up is the North Queensland Cowboys taking on the Newcastle Knights. A very interesting matchup because Cowboys have been absolutely flying. Something that I didn't think I'd be saying at this point in the season. Maybe last year, I think last year I tipped them to be sort of going how they are this year. But they are absolutely flying, destroyed the Eels, like absolutely destroyed them. Val Holmes in maybe the form of his career. Um, you got the hammer back for them. Drinkwater's been really good for them. Um, Chad has been very, very good. Like all the players who I'm not really expecting too much or haven't really done that much in the last couple of seasons have come out and they're absolutely flying. Whereas the Knights, they started off very, very strong. Um, I saw the first couple of weeks and I thought, here we go. They are the real deal this year. Now all of a sudden, they've got a complete new halves pairing. You got Texway and you got Croslin in there. I, I don't understand how that is a good move. Like for me, that is literally the worst first halves pairing you could go for. Um, I know there's been a little bit of talk about Tex Hoy and how he should be in first grade, but uh, a lot of these guys, I've seen them in first grade before and they haven't really offered too much. Got Adam Clune there, who I thought looked pretty good, pretty good organizer, and Jay Clifford apparently is out due to like personal reasons, but they hooked him at half time or whatever. The night side isn't losing because of the halves. The, the forwards are getting no go forward whatsoever. The backs can't work off that, the halves can't work off that. You got the Saifini boys who are on huge money, New South Wales um, prop, like he's, they're not doing anything, and that includes both for them. Clemmer is probably, he used to be a gun, but he hasn't really been in the last couple of years, but he seems to be the one who's trying to step up. Uh, and the rest of the side, like Frizzell's and uh, Fitzgibbons and, and all that, Barnett's out suspended. I mean, he's gone off to the Warriors, but um, the forward pack is just not doing their job, which means that the halves can't do their job, which means that, like, it's confusing to me that they've went and dropped both their halves at once, but I don't know. I, just, I can't see any way the Knights win this one. Callum Ponga tried his guts out last week. As much as I say that he's not worth the money that he's on, he tried so hard. He was the only one trying. They're letting balls bounce from the kickoff. 
Like, they, they're kicking out on the floor to start off with when they're doing it, and they're letting balls just bounce and just roll over, and they're just looking around at each other. Like, it was actually embarrassing. Anyways, enough ranting about the Knights. I'm going to give a result for this one. Cowboys are in this one 13 plus. Home game for them. I think this is easy money. Now, on a Sunday afternoon football, it sees the Melbourne Storm taking on a team with a win streak. The St. George Illawarra Dragons. Feels weird to be saying team who's on a win streak, uh, and you have the Melbourne Storm there, but the Dragons have been winning, but they haven't been re- winning that well. So they've been playing like the Knights and the Tigers and stuff. They've been winning, but I haven't necessarily liked too much of what I've seen. Melbourne Storm, though, a whole nother level. Do I not really need to talk about this game too much? Melbourne Storm killing it. Dragons looking all right. They're getting the results. I like Moses Empire in the side. Um, <laughs> I didn't think I would say that, but I think him being in the side just adds that little bit of experience that they needed. Uh, but like Storm by 50 at least. Like, Storm are just way too good. Like, they could, you put most teams in front of them, they're going to towel them up. So, this is no diss on the Dragons. This is just Melbourne are that good. So, let's just go Melbourne 13 plus, just to be official, but yeah, Melbourne 13 plus. Now, into the last game of the round. I think this is an interesting one as well. We've got the Canela Southern Sharks taking on the New Zealand Warriors. New Zealand obviously smashed by Melbourne, but I just got done saying that Melbourne are going to smash a lot of sides. They've been absolutely flying, especially a home game for them, the Anzac game. It was, it was a bad loss for the Warriors, but they did hit back last week against the Raiders though. The Raiders are pretty poor. Warriors were very, very poor themselves last week. They got very, very lucky with a Matt Lodge laying down. Like he's even admitted that he laid down. Um, they pretty much got away with that one. And I know Warriors fans will probably not be too happy with what I'm saying, but like I didn't think they necessarily deserved to win that one last week. I know it's nice. It's a nice story that they hit back after getting smashed the, and they won the game, but Raiders were poor. They were poor. Sharks, on the other hand, lost to the Broncos. Pretty disappointing loss. Uh, you can't really be losing a team like the Broncos if you want to be a premiership force. And that's kind of what's being talked about with the Sharks. So first little chink in the armor for the Sharks so far, I would say, um, even in terms of like Nico Heinz and all that, everything had been smooth sailing so far. Then all of a sudden they lose to the Broncos and they lose pretty well. Uh, so it sort of raises a few question marks over whether, say like Talakai, for example, uh, he got absolutely destroyed by Stags. really. I know he had some good stats in that, but Stags was all over him. And, like, if you can shut down Talakai, do you shut down the Sharks? If you shut down Nico Hines? Like, there's a lot of questions now that weren't necessarily there. Before, it was like, oh, Talakai, gun. Nico Hines, gun. Will Kennedy, gun. Like, if you shut down a couple players, do you shut down the whole Sharks side? Uh, and can the Warriors do that? I don't know if they can. I don't necessarily think they can, but... Hey, they got the job done last week. Can they get it done this week? I don't think so. I think the Sharks are going to win this one. I think they're going to win it well, 13 plus. But I think it will be an entertaining game regardless. So, um, look, I'm I'm excited to see how Sean Johnson goes up against his old club and, and just how the Sharks bounce back, if they can bounce back, and whether the Warriors can sort of get the form going. So, um, I think it's going to be a good game. But like I said, 13 plus Sharks. Anyways, guys, that's where I'm going to wrap up this one. Hopefully you did enjoy the video. Hopefully you enjoyed the tips. Let me know in the comment section below, what are your tips for round nine? Are they better than mine? Have you been doing better overall than me? Most likely, yes. But let me know in the comment section below. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like on it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Use the notification bell. Don't rely on the sub boxes. Use the notification bell and never miss any of my videos. Also, chuck me a follow on social media. It's on the screen right now. It's Mr. Luke and YT for the most part. My face looks Mr. Luke, but everything else, including Snapchat, including TikTok, is Mr. Luke and YT. Give me a follow, give me an ad. Also, become a member of the channel. It helps out the channel massively. There's three tiers. You get different perks depending on what tier you go for, what level you go for. Um, you can go and click on the link in the description below. It will take you where you need to sign up. It will show you all the levels. Pick a level. You get exclusive emojis. You get custom streams. A few things like that. Um, you can get a full list of what it is when you click on that little link. So go ahead, sign up, become a member. But yeah, that's where I'm going to end things, guys. Thank you for watching. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more content on the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. See yous.